Okay. And we're back with Wrath of the Righteous. Okay. <clears throat> Last we left off, I just finished saving David. Oh, the waiting's never fun. And it's time to get back to it. Before anything else, I'm gonna handle everyone's leveling up. Contrary soul. Falling victim to a deadly demonic plot would be enough to give anyone a grim outlook on life and on the looming threat from the abyss. But the young Count Darren is a contrary soul. He sees the world as a grand playground and seems to turn a blind eye to the self sacrifice of the Crusaders and the horrors of war. Feasts and frivolity, banquets and banter. Darren lives like the world is ending, and it very well might be. While the wor world burns. Every aristocrat is obliged to have a secret or two, but in this regard, the young Count Arende has eclipsed all of, the, of Mendevian high society. His secret is the mysterious and incredibly dangerous entity for whom Darren has become a living gateway to the world of Galarian. The Count has already spent ten years living in the unseen presence of his otherworldly guest, completely unable to tell a soul about it. And no matter where Darren's gaze may turn, Someone else is watching through his eyes. The other. Here he is, master of intimidation, slayer of hell knights, and defender of the lawless. <laughs> Zero Dragoon. <laughs> Hold on now. How am I the def how am I the defender of the lawless? I'm the defender of the misfortunate. That 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 would be a better way to put it. Alright, come on. One final breath. <clears throat> it is done. The other has been defeated, but this, this sinister otherworldly entity was but one of the obstacles between Darren and the freedom he so desperately craves. The Inquisitor Leotur became the second of these obstacles, and he ultimately gave his life for his principles. It is unlikely that Darren will shed a tear over his loss. After living a shackled existence for so long, the, now the Count has the whole world spread out before him, and he will not miss his chance to enjoy every moment of this new life. Alright. We did it. Level up. Oracle. Heal mass. Yeah, why not? Uncanny dodge. Then Arushale. Level up. Espionage expert. Short bow, point blank master. Why not? I am yours to command. Let's see. 
spider, critical focus. Surprised she didn't have it already. Hold on. What weapon is she getting? No, no, no. Just a plus four to confirm crits. No Easy reason enough. To pause. Then, Sila, what do you get? Mercy against paralyzed. Oh man, I could use that in a, the other game. Alright, Camellia. Spellhunter. Right. Slumber. That's a crappy ability. Hold on, wait. We'll save to negate. If they fail, fall asleep for a number of rounds equal to the shaman's level. The hex can affect a creature of any hit the oh shit. That is good. Alright. What else we got? That's it. Alright. Time for Lewis. Level up. Fighter. Just pure fighter. With uh fifty one intimidate for now. And it can only get better. It's a 51 to, like, persuasion, but we're, all, we're real focused on that Intimidate. Alright, what else can I get for this build? Hammer the Gap. What did I get last level? Critical Focus. Yeah, that's about right. Greater Weapon Scimitar. What should I get for him? No need for weapon focus, weapon finesse. We've already got improved critical for the weapon. Vital strike is unnecessary. Um, I mean, no, I never like no one ever really plans to have like this far in. So now I'm just looking at how can I enhance the build because the build's pretty much done. Penetrating strike. Um, maybe. Improved initiative, maybe. Yeah. Staggering critical, sickening critical. Hmm. Tiring critical. Let's see. Sunder armor could have been useful many times before. Let's see, combat maneuver bonus. Yes. See, you can dislodge and right. So for every five, the penalty increase for one round. Hmm. Yeah, sure. Why not? Sunder armor. Thanks for the suggestion. It's an odd word. Freedom. Hmm? Why did you mention freedom? Because it is the greatest treasure, second only to life itself, which many fail to appreciate, sadly. People are so eager to shackle themselves, sacrificing their freedom, and they don't even realize it. Well, so be it. I am free now, and I, for one, do know how to appreciate my freedom. We just killed a man for your sake. Oh, yes. And I even feel something approaching regret. This Inquisitor didn't seem such a dreadful hypocrite, unlike the others of his kind. He died for his beliefs. 
Such is life. The genuinely righteous always die first. But he knew the risks. I... I doubt I would ever be willing to sacrifice everything I am for the sake of a stranger. I have so many questions for you about the other and more. Let's postpone this conversation until we are back at camp or somewhere else safe. Apologies, but I'm too exhausted now to talk about it. First, I need to convince myself that it's all over. We have to go. I rarely say things like this. I have never said anything like this to anyone before, to be precise. But I am amazed by everything you have done for me. I'm not sure I deserved it, but still, I am very grateful. Hmm. You're welcome. Find the entrance to the ineluctable prison, which is easy to do, it's right there. I don't know why it has all these fake, these closed entrances. But there they are. Alright. Let's teleport to Dresden. Go to the citadel and rest up. game get a move on there we go and who is this commander glad to see you back at the head of the military council a decision is required of you more urgently than ever here's the situation we don't have an army in the strictest sense and the enemy is putting up much more of a fight than previously. Judging by the reports, the demons are relying less and less on the armies of their mortal servants and the, simple, and the power of simple blades, and more and more on magic and dark sorceries. We must respond in kind by bolstering our forces with expert spellcasters. I'm prepared to send an order to Canabras at once, requesting the necessary reinforcements. I propose we support our army with Bardic's magic. Bards learn all kinds of spells in their travels, and their songs can inspire our warriors and give them strength to fight. So, these demons know their vile magics. But I, but I know something stronger than that. The power of the gods. We need some war priests in our army. Their spells will chase away the darkness and heal the wounded. If, you, if you're in need of mages versed in the art of killing, you should contact the Daggermark Poisoners Guild. Their alchemists are second to none when it comes to making deadly poisons or utilizing them in battle. Windwalk frowns. Magic is a devious thing. If you want to fight a mage, you need the help of an old and experienced witch. Their sorceries can make any magic wilt. Let's call witches to our aid. Well, I'm sure every one of these options is viable. I don't know which of these would be the best, but none of these sound bad. All right, we've been able to manage with what magic we've had just fine so far. The enemy never stands still. The more serious a threat we become for them, the more substantial will be the forces they throw at us. 
Gone are the days when the abyss would casually send hosts of mindless cultists and lower demons. Now we're up against more cunning and skilled opponents who can incinerate a dozen soldiers with a single spell. We must respond to this with magic of our own, or we will lose. Wizards, ancient and powerful keepers of chaos, and they're not available. We got war priests, alchemists, witches, and bards. We don't have wizards as a viable option. Otherwise, yeah, choose like choose wizards. All right. Are you sure Canabris is going to send us troops? Without a doubt, Canabris is much safer than we are at the moment. And I'm convinced that the Warden can provide some forces to support us. All of Mendev knows that right now. Dresden is the, is the dam holding back the river of demonic corruption that would otherwise be flooding the south. The kingdom is in the process of mobilization, and Queen Galfrey's March on Eyes has encouraged many who previously shirked military service to join the ranks of the army. Why didn't you leave with Galfrey, Captain Odin? Captain Odin grows pale, but his voice sounds cold and steady. I did not... I did put in a request for a transfer to the front lines. Unfortunately, I was ref it was refused. Command determined that, due to the psychological trauma I suffered during my years of service on the border, I am no longer fit for battlefield command. He lowers his head. As much as it stings to admit it, they may be right. It's been a long time since I smelled burning flesh and heard the screams of battle, and I can't guarantee that, when I do, I'll be able to maintain my composure. That I won't fail the soldiers who will be depending on me. However, I can still serve them by staying where I am. I want to hear the opinions of my advisors. Everyone looks at you expectantly. Sila, are the war, war priests battle ready? Of course. There are, there are plenty of brave and honest people among them, and serving the gods of light makes it their duty to resist evil. Many war priests made a conscious choice to forego a life of peace because their ideals wouldn't let them stand idly by. They've studied the military craft, and their blessings and healing spells have saved many a soldier's life. I hate the idea of risking the lives of the gods' servants. If they perish, their celestial patrons may resent it and turn their backs on us. That makes no sense. It's in the title War Priest. What do you expect, to, what do you expect from war? Uh, that's a weak argument. Alright, let's see. Greybore, tell me more about the Poisoner's Guild. They're a creepy bunch. Imagine. If you will. An alchemist and an accomplished scientist who can take your breakfast and make a bomb or a poison that could kill a basilisk out of it. And now imagine that this same alchemist doesn't mind personally showing, shoving this poison into a basilisk's mouth. That's a pretty good description of your average member of the Dagger Mark Poisoner's Guild. You're on your own here. I don't know these units, but the war priests seem the most... Reliable next to the alchemist. I mean, the alchemist just sounds like they're they're ready to go fucking all in to kill something. It's true their blades coated with magical poisons are not as dramatic as calling down lightning from the skies, but they but they are just as effective and far less conspicuous. You underestimate the power of dark magic, Greybor. A poison dagger can't send every scoundrel in this world to Phrasma. True, there are demons that are just flat out immune to poison. Alright, Windelog, why do we need witches' help? For a moment, fear flickers in Windelog's eyes. 
Don't talk about witches so casually, master. Their words are full of a dark, grim wisdom that calms the heart and fills it with cruel malice. And the blight with which they infect those who invoke their ire cannot be cured. Even the demons will learn to fear our witches. If the alchemists can cast bombs, they'd be incredibly tough, and war priests are just a flat upgrade to clerics. Hmm. Alright. I've been ordered to kill witches a couple of times. Those weren't the most pleasant contracts. Frankly, if I were your soldier, I'd consider deserting at the very sight of allies like those. Damn. That's true. I guess it, it might lower morale of regular troops if they saw that. All right. Uh, Captain Odon, how can bards help us on the battlefield? It's become a fine tradition among Mendevian warriors to go into battle accompanied by songs and of daring bards who glorify heroic deeds and strengthen the hand that smites the demons. Their ballads will inspire our soldiers, and their spells can prove useful in the most unexpected situations. Everything is clear to me now. Your advisors look not respectfully in response to your words. All right, I have the war priest join our ranks. The main spellcaster's lodge provides weekly recruitment for war priests. Spellcaster is capable of healing and empowering allies. Church guards turn into. Wait. War priests. Alright. Cure moderate wounds, dispel an aura of courage. All allied units within a radius of two squares gain a plus four to saving throws against fear. Well, that's neat, I guess. Can dispel magic remove a summon creature? No. Doesn't look like it. <sighs> Clerics who dedicated their lives to military service and who are as much soldiers as they are priests. They can perform their duties within regular military units or serve as the military wing of the church. And they use melee weapons. What, do all of them use melee weapons only? Let's see. Oh, we don't get alchemists, we get assassins. Okay. Sneak move. Unit can teleport to any unoccupied square instead of moving. Uh, okay. And then they fight with daggers. And poison strike. Units attack, poison the target, and apply a minus two penalty to strength. So do I want... Well, that changes everything. It does? Heartless and cynical masters of assassination. Elite mercenaries who know how to sneak up on their victims and take their lives with a dagger or poison. All right, and then we'll invite witches into our army. What do witches do? Agony, dispel, infected wounds, misfortune. So agony, target unit is nauseated for three rounds. A fort save neutralizes the effect. Hmm? Assassins are exactly spell casters as much as they are effectively alchemists when it comes to poison. Oh, wait, wait. Assassins aren't exact. So let me reread that. Assassins aren't exactly spellcasters as much as they are effectively alchemists when it comes to poison. So is that is that good? <laughs> Do I want that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the real comparison. I mean, I've seen Jubilost in action, so I kind of figured like. The, the units would be chucking bombs left, right, and center like Jubilos would. 
from, you know, from Kingmaker. Let's see, infected. Target unit receives disease and applies a minus four to the constitution. Can only affect the living unit. Well, that sucks. And Misfortune's the last one. Target unit receives a minus three penalty to attack. Anytime the unit makes a roll, it must roll twice and take the worst result. Assassins are good by themselves, but if you want magic, I'd still go with War Priests. Hmm. And let me check out what the bards do. Let's see. But they're very impressed on the battlefield. Bards disprove the idea that war is not a place for art. The inspiring songs fill soldiers with new vigor. Aura of superiority. Plus two bonus on all ability scores for, for one round. Yeah. That becomes dependent on the turn order, I guess. That misfortune is actually pretty good. Hmm. Aura of Onslaught. All allied units within a radius of two squares get a plus three bonus for attack for one round. And then a plus three bonus to AC for one round or Aura of Caution. Plus four to saving throws for one round. Now, you know, if it was for at least two, I'd I'd see it. Which is ability lasts for what? It doesn't say. Not affected by target spell resistance. Anytime they make a roll, they roll twice and take the worst result, along with a minus three to attack. I see. Affected wounds. Minus four to constitution. And agony. I don't think their abilities are bad at all. Hmm. It's a toss up between witches and war priests, really. And I think I'll go for the witches. We'll invite witches into our army. When do our grubs her hands triumphantly? Spells, curses, and evil charms. This is what awaits our enemies. Misfortune is touch range, however, so that sucks. I'll make do. It seems like a lot. All the all these so-called spellcasters are. Hmm. Go war priest, dude! I literally just made the choice. God damn it! <laughs> I'll send a letter to Canabras immediately, requesting a group of spellcasters to be sent to our aid. I'm certain they will arrive soon, Commander. I'm sure it'll be fine. Alright. That aside, take my slowness into account. The War Priest does what again? They give you cure, cure, mod, cure moderate wounds and dispel and what else? Let's see. The monster's feet. Let's see, the relic will be augmented. You always diss me. No, I don't. <laughs> Besides, it's not that hard to do, so sure. Ugh. We'll load. I'm gonna rapid fire the chat chatting this time around. Let's post I rarely Sp 
speed for the leveling up. My Chirashi is not agreeing with my drink. I'm sorry, I don't know what that, where Chirashi is. You mean like you're trying to combo your food with a drink? Since I know what I'm getting this time around, it doesn't take that long. Cinder armor. Get some once, you'll enjoy it. Uh, if I can find it. How much is Tarashi? Or like, where can I, where can I get it? Teleport to Dresden. Enter. Sit it down. Just order sushi and you'll find it. Okay. It does narrow it down. So look for the Japanese or the Chinese restaurants. Never heard of Chirashi before, but hey. I've eaten sushi before. It's enjoyable. And the choice this time. All right. So before before I make it, War Priest, right? I'll wait for the response before I click it. Yeah, War Priest. Make for better units, in my opinion. Okay. Here we go. Have War Priest join our ranks. Excellent. Our fighters will need their spells, but their words of solace and support will be just as important, too. To reach a soldier's heart, you need to eat from the same pot and wear the same boots. I believe they have better AC as well or better hit points. Well, we'll find out. I will send a letter to Canabris immediately requesting a group of spellcasters to be sent to our aid. I'm sure they will arrive soon, Commander. ready but before that campaign let's recruit some units I cannot veterans or praise okay new plan manage dressing I got I don't think I built a main lodge here yet Junior's Workshop, Hall of Strategy, Main Spellcaster's Lodge. 
Nope. What should I build it next to? Training grounds? Arsenal? Yeah. Any spellcaster lodge right here. And let's see. Wow, well, should I build it anyway? I already have a smithy, training, two training grounds. What don't I have? A shelter. A shelter allows the party's commander to rest in a fort without increasing the effects of abyssal corruption. That's very pointless to build here. Pathfinder Society Lodge. I already have one here. Somewhere. There it is. Market Citadel. Wait, do I not have a Citadel already? Yeah, I don't. I'm sure I'll be fine. Hall of Strategy. I need to buy some material points. Mm. All trample units in an adjoining area. No. Nah. Here. Bulletin board. Yeah, I'll just build it over here. Just build a market. Next to Citadel. Doesn't really matter where I build it. Hall of Strategy. Sure. Alright. And I guess that's it for the time being. What does this do? No, I should have built this first. Alright, moving on. Events, Dead Man's Club. Let's see. Soldiers who lost their comrades along with their will to live have founded the so-called Dead Men's Club. They leave Dresden to die in battle as heroes and deal as much damage to the enemy as they can in the process. 
Unfortunately, these actions ruined their officers' plans and undermined discipline within the ranks. Ban the club. Good. Crusader morale goes up. Encourage the club. Chaotic. Removes 5% of recruited units. All enemies. All enemy units receive the wounded feet for two days. Two Only two days? Well, screw that. I will be your dead man. No. You don't need to do that. <laughs> I need people alive, not dead. Let's see. Evil removes 5% of recruit units and unlocks ambush ritual. All units in the ar target army take damage. Use dead men in a trap for the demons. Let Ember talk to the warriors. Chaotic. Removes 5% of the recruited units. Crusade morale increases by 50. Or banning the club only increases it by 25. You know what? We'll let Ember talk to them. Hopefully this goes well. Ember talked to the soldiers and convinced them that death was inevitable and could often be pointless and sudden, but these warriors were given a chance to die for a reason. The soldiers were inspired by her words and decided not to expedite their deaths. As for those who persisted in their desire to fall with honor, she did not try to stop them. God damn it. <sighs> Fate of the Dirty Squirrel. What do we do? Turn it into an amulet or a belt. Amulet. Amulet of ooze. This is an intermediate step of relic creation. And same for the belt. So, I have to choose one or the other. And I have no clue as to know what, what happens to either one. Okay. So either turn into an amulet or a belt. Um, I don't know. Off the top of my head, that's a bad idea. How many days does it take to complete? It doesn't tell me. Grant. Okay, save. I don't. Amulet. The mage has carried out his task. Drake leader. Right, recruit 25 rift drakes. Issue the decree. Fate of the Coyest One. All oh, right, the other, the other relics. Um, sure. Is there anything else? Development. Um, I guess I could recruit warriors of the of the device again. Guess we'll do that. Let's see. The relic, the chill roars hide in tusks. Because why not? Five days, and it'll be done.
instead of being my dead man, can you be one of my knights? My dragoon, after all. Gotta start that. Gotta start that order of knights at some point. Wait. Yeah. Let's see. What's the term? Dragon warrior? Dragon knight? Something like that. Rest. Pearls of wisdom from Brother Wolgen. When you eat in a tavern, you don't have to pay. Just make sure to sit close to the door. If you're willing to make a magus, then sure. Deal. Like a pure magus or an eldritch scion? Also, haven't you watched Dead Man Wonderland? Nope. Okay, no. Let me let me be frank. I saw episode one, and even then, I couldn't really understand a lot of what was going on. I saw people shooting their. I saw the main character shoot his blood like blood bullets. An interesting concept. But I didn't have cable at the time, and like, I had to leave. I had to leave to go somewhere else, and I didn't remember to. I didn't have any time to like hang out with the guy anymore, so that had the cable for it. So I never did, and then I just never bothered to like watch it. I've had I had Netflix at one point, but I never went out of my way to watch Dead Man Wonderland. Oh yeah, I remember. They censored the cussing. And I was like, I... No. Why would I need you to censor the cussing? Alright, move it. Level up, Lon. Hopefully he doesn't betray... He doesn't try to stab me in the back. Well, he probably will. Wolgif, level up. Worst thing I'll think Wolgif will do is cut and run. If things get real bad. Let's see. Lightning disintegrate. Alright. Wolgif's in there easier. All right, I'll make an eldritch sign. Wait to rest. What the hell? The witch may target a single undead creature with this hex, as if with the undeath to death spell. A will save negates this effect. Whether or not the save is successful, a creature cannot be the target of this hex for again for one day. But it's undeath to death without the need for any diamond or diamond dust. Sneeze. She gains an ability called Grand Hex. Where is that? Here it is. Starting at 18th level, and every two levels thereafter, a witch can choose a grand hex whenever she could select a new hex. Animal Servant. So it turns a human into a bee shape. One creature retains its intelligence. If any, but the witch controls its mind. This effect functions as a dominate monster, except the creature does not receive further saving throws to resist the hex. Jesus. 
That's a bit, that's a bit overkill. Death Curse. This hex has a range of 30 feet. Hex creature sees a will save to negate the effect. If the save is failed, creature becomes fatigued for the first round of the hex. On the second round of the hex, the creature becomes exhausted. On the third round, the creature dies unless it succeeds a fourth save. Creatures that fail the first save but succeed the second remain exhausted and take 46 points of damage plus one point of damage per level of the witch. Slaying the witch that hex the creature ends the effect, but any fatigue or exhaustion remains. Whether or not the saves are successful, a creature cannot be targeted. Okay. So. And last is Life Giver. Once per day, the witch can, as a full round action, touch a dead creature and bring it back to life. This functions as resurrection, but does not require a material component. Jeez. It's overkill. Ninio. Level up. Clashing rocks. Weird. What does weird do? Only targets enemies. Functions as Phantasmal Killer, except it can affect more than one creature. Only the affected creatures see the Phantasmal creatures attacking them. If the subject's fourth save succeeds, still takes 3d6 damage and is stunned for one round. Also, the, the subject also takes 1d4 points of strength damage. Yeah, well... We'll spend that. And Clashing Rocks. It's a reflex save. I I remember this spell. Just does a crap ton of damage. Uh, before I do anything else. Um, so we're gonna replace a lot of these spells with weird. I have one sunburst. This is why not. But yeah, weird. Uh, yeah, you. Um, this. This. Sweet. To grab. I'm trying to think. It's in a huge element one. Right. Nimbus. Where? Yeah. What does Serenity do? Hmm. This only hits enemies, right? Yeah. Or that. I 
don't really know what else I grabbed from him. I'm gonna cast a bone shaker, I guess. Just to reiterate, there's no new spell slots, right? Oh, there is. Um, one more. And vengeance. Elder Elemental. Alright, he's done. And last but not least, Greybore. Level up. Slayer. Dispelling attack. Sneak attack, dispelling attack, quarry, and Slayer's advance. Cool! Alright, let's save so I don't have to do all this over again. Moving. We'll talk to a few of the party members at their final events pretty much done. Oh wait, no. Uh, talk to the jewel trader. Sell bulk. Pretty weighed down as it is. Throwing axes, long swords, great axes, scimitars, quarter staffs, everything else is something particularly unique, so we'll leave that alone. And then all these armors, I don't need all these plus one shields. Old breastplates. Warm Ethel Chain Shirt. Alright. And then... 16... Jeez. Got a lot of crap. Alright. Don't need that. Oh. And stuff for the relic. Okay. Well, why do I have it? What's oh, newest? Does it do anything now? Nope. What was the amulet that I was using earlier? Oh yeah, this one.
See, hello, friend. Oh, my friend. Do you how? Do you know how much I love calling you that? Of course you do. All right, tell me about yourself. My pleasure. Friends share everything. What do you think of Horgus and your mother now? Hmm. I do not think of them at all. Why do I need them when I have you, my trusted protector, who will come to my aid at a moment's notice? Society places too great a value on blood ties. Truly kindred souls are those with which we choose to entwine ourselves as we journey through life. Tell me what it feels like when you kill. The desire to kill arises in me naturally. The desire intrudes on my thoughts until little by little it ensnares my mind wholly. To the point that I cannot think of anything else. I can fight the urge, and it will retreat for a time, but it will inevitably return in an overwhelming wave. The best remedy is to kill someone. To plunge my dagger into another's heart or chest at the very least. To look my victim in the eye, relishing every moment of the forbidden spectacle. But sometimes, sometimes a person crosses my path, and I sense it. There they are. That one is mine. They will be mine. And the desire to kill springs up unbidden, vivid and burning like a forest fire. Suppressing that urge is difficult indeed. I have experienced it a few times with my old mentor in my childhood, and with some others. She licks her dry lips. <sighs> I've learned enough. Have I mentioned that I love our conversations? I'm glad you told me the truth about Mariah. It may be hard to believe, but I think I am glad of it too. It's brought us even closer together. We have the same mythical powers, and we keep the same secrets. We are now closer than best friends or even blood relations. I value it more than I could have even imagined. Please never lie to me again. Of course. Camilla gives you a half smile. Never again. Okay, I have to go. It's me again soon. You don't want me to start missing you. Onwards. All right, talk to David. All right, there you are. I have a number of quest new questions for you. I thought so. Darren gives you a sad smile. Do you know what that entity haunting you was exactly? We called it the other. It is not an entity, but entities. Though you may still call them the other if you wish, it's a fitting name. I myself invented several hundred different names for them over the course of our ten years together. Most of those were completely unutterable in any polite society, of course. If you wish to know what exactly that thing was, I can't give you much more information, I'm afraid. They were countless. They were dead. And they all had some kind of a joint consciousness. Like a swarm. A swarm of ghosts. One thing is certain. Those ghosts were not of our world. Did you voluntarily agree to all the conditions proposed by the other? It was absolutely voluntary. Or absolutely voluntarily. If you forget about the demonic plague or the murderous Lilitu orchestrating it, it was either that or certain death. What was it like living with that? It was most certainly an unforgettable experience. In all seriousness, though, I'm not sure I'm ready to talk about it quite yet. The other 
the other have grown so deep into me. I still can't fully process the fact that the leash, the constant surveillance, is gone. A mind-altering realization in all senses of the word. Why did the other behave so oddly? Concealing their presence by any means possible while at the same time beheading demons and humans alike. I haven't the slightest clue. Absolutely no idea. They did not talk to me much, except for a few rare instances when they wanted to frighten me or make me do something for them. I'm not even sure about those he those heads. Whether they actually killed anyone, or simply found corpses and took the parts they liked the most. I had plenty of time to hypothesize over the years, and I came up with several theories. I'm not sure if any of them are true, but I think the other were not hiding from us mortals. It looked more like they were afraid of gods and other powerful entities. You can't roam around this world without stumbling upon a cleric or a cultist, and those fellows are more than happy to pass the news on to their patrons. This might be the only reason for the other not to reveal themselves around mortals. Although nobody was truly able to threaten their existence until they met the mythical commander of the Fifth Crusade, Why didn't the other come out to defend you before? After all, you found yourself in danger on multiple occasions on your travels with me. That is certainly true. You are a source of endless danger and fun. As for your question, Darren sighs. I took some precautions to vouchsafe my life. A contract with Abadar's temple in the capital. It cost me several years' worth of revenue from all my estates combined. Under the contract, if I fail to make contact with the temple for a year, the clerics shall be obliged to use their sacred magic to discover my fate and conduct a resurrection ritual should it turn out that I have met a premature end. The other, they, knew about it. Like they knew about literally everything else that ever happened to me. I felt their presence, their otherworldly scrutiny, as I negotiated the terms and signed the contract. The, pros the prospect of being denied their gateway for a year did not seem to perturb them, it seems, provided that I would be resurrected later, but with you it was a, different, a very different matter. You are a threat even to demon lords. In your presence, the other was, were agitated, e uneasy, and they flew into a rage when you expressed your intention to kill me. I found out everything I wanted to know. On the one hand, I'm glad to be able to talk about this freely. On the other, I don't wish to remember it again. I should go. Goodbye. All right. Let's see. Well, if you got anything new to say, I doubt it. Nope. All right. Now that's everything. We already rested in here as well, so the only thing left to do... Oh, wait, that's right. I'm supposed to talk to... I guess Lon and Windowog? Chief Soul still alive? Yep. Let's see... Yep. So, so beautiful. Now I understand why you're fighting for it. So many spells. I feel dizzy. The sky, is it always so high? Is there a way to remove it? Hmm. 
Alright, Windrock. Windrock greets you with a servile smile. Master, how can I serve you? What will you do now that Savamelik is free is dead and the Mongols are free? First I'll repay you for letting me live by slaughtering all the demons in the world wind. And then I will look for a new source of power instead of the one Savamelik's poison promised us. For Uplanders, victory will mean peace, but for us it will be just the beginning of our own war. We will have to fight for our right to live, our right to be among you. And I'm going to need all the power I can get to lead my people in that fight. Nope. She's got nothing new to say. Right. Lon. Lon is busy adjusting his bowstring, but he puts down his bow when he notices you. Commander, the more I look around, the more confident I am that I made the right decision. My tribe feels at home here, and that's what's important. Uh, this will be a. I should go. This will be a lot more talking than I really have want to spend time on. I want to at least be on. I want to at least like start the next dungeon. Right, let's see. Camilla, get out of here. We'll make room for. Make room for Ninia. I want to see that weird spell in action. We are going to head towards not the old Sarkorian mines. Got my ass kicked with that crap. We're gonna head towards the bladesmith's workshop. The spinner of nightmares den. The blooming meadow. Where do I need to be? The ineluctable prison. Let's go. Just teleport there. All right. If I remember right. So there's a demon army there. I should just be able to go up and around them. Oh, Atrocious, when you said about the uh, Elder Sound, do you mean for Lewis or for another for my next playthrough? A random encounter that's not so random. Lord Baphomet has sent me to bring him your head. You won't escape the Ivory Hunter. Next playful. Got it. Your bones will join the myriad others. Sick em. This is already deadly enough. I'll tear your throat out. Oh, whoa, look at these. Crag Lenorm. Blood trackers. That's fascinating. Right, so we're going to. Oh, whoops. Forgot the long rest. Oh well.
Uh, nope. Let's just cast prayer. I'm going to have to use this. Alright, cast that right here. Should be fine. This should work. It only works on enemies, so... Oh, the spell went off, but it didn't hit anybody. Didn't think there were the Norn in this game. Well, you get to learn something new every day. And I'm, go I'm probably going to die. <laughs> I should really have bought more diamonds when I was in the store. Alright, uh, cast another... Hmm? Your weapons, remember your- OH, RIGHT! No chat. That's another phantasmal killer on this guy. Oh wait. Cast Icy Prison. Uh, on this guy. He's going to... Ninja, why are you in melee? Oh, right. It's because they're so fucking huge. She has to be that close to cast her spells. Okay. You know what? Oh, wow. This is not looking good. That didn't end. That didn't end well. Who knew going near the, the near where like a fucking combat encounter near the end of the game would actually require more prep time? Yeah, yeah, the norms are tough. Yeah. All right. So here's what we're gonna. A do. bright future awaits. First, cast Lesser Restoration. A few of us. You too. We're going to get rid of these fatigue stats that we had. I didn't think it would be an issue. Because I didn't think we were going to come across something this tough. Rely on me. Right. Okay. Huh? Oh, yes. What? Now we cast prep. mirror image. No one stands in my way. Yeah. Last for a minute per mythic rank. Yeah. Use that. So we're gonna have some mirror image effects going on. Oh, right. Any other spells to cast? Uh, is this Shadow Conjuration? Maybe I should have cast Power Word Blind. Or Power Word Stun. I just didn't put much stock into what I'd be fighting. So. 
now that we're taking them a bit more seriously. I welcome your company. Cast bless. I shall not be swayed from my path. Together we stand. The Norns are evil creatures, right? Or are they just like chaotic? Or courage. Or aura. There's edge. Activate divine weapon bond. And then when you're done. Alright. Alright. You cast angelic greater on yourself as well. Let's see. What else we got? We've got that. What else we got? I don't think they used a lot of elemental damage or anything. I guess cast protection from fire just for the hell of it. Poison. And just in case they're not evil and just chaotic, there's protection from that too. False life. Prayer. Are we ready to move out? What else is there? Any other spell I'm not thinking of. Since we're not in the fight yet, might as well cast one of these. Um, Rift of Ruin, no. Sea Mantle, what the hell is this? Try. Mm. Hmm. Summon a water elemental, fire elemental. Summon a fire elemental, I guess. And is there anything else I'd want to summon? Bogeyman, a monadic deva or frost giant. Sure. Oh, never mind. Logic is lacking. Well, so much for that. Use that. Okay, is there anything I'm forgetting? I guess I could get ready from just run up to do the dragon breath. Huh. Cast a weird spell. Oh, sweet! They failed it! Uh, 
This is a really tough fight. Yo, Mass. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Um, don't, don't mass heal. Just heal. Just heal Lewis. Not himself. Oh no, Breath of Life didn't save me. That means the match is over. That sucks. God damn, come on. So close. Wait, two of them were just instantly dead from the freaking weird spell. You're still half-assing your fights. Yeah, well, if I am, I forgot what I'm supposed to do. What am I doing? What am I supposed to do to not be considered half-assing them? Oh, right, I didn't haste. I got him. Perhaps is take your weapons. Alright, I got him, I got him. I'm using the right ones now. The scimitars. need to use everything else. I saw them cast some fire spells, so I was right to use this. 
to move out. The struggles never cease. Ugh, the waiting's never fun. Let's see. What else we got? Burst of glory. Yeah, this. Heroic invocation. Sure. Alright. Next, uh, summon Undead Guardian. Open to ideas. You summon, don't f summon the fire elemental, summon, summon earth. I to summon the Monadic Day the last time. We'll get it right this time. Ah, god damn it. Alright, I'm in a much better spot this time. Let's see how this works out. Lewis Breathe. Alright. Nenio cast weird. Should still target all of them. One down. Alright, crits. Oh my, I'm still half-assing it. I forgot to cast haste. Well, you know what? I won anyway. Finally. The only one who had anything to speak of was the Ivory Hunter. An ornate key carved from bone and found on the body of a powerful minion of Baphomet. 
Well, he had some decent loot. Plus four ring, plus four cloak, plus four amulet, plus five chain shirt, plus five flail. Well, good for him. Random victims. to be everything. Let me go over this corner here. Clear the rest of this map out. And yeah, that's it. It's everything. Minotaurs aren't demons, so he has decent gear. Yeah, I know. I just wish, like, they throw, if they throw an enemy, I kind of want to get treasure regardless. But, yeah, I, I guess it makes sense that Lenorn doesn't have much on it. Still, you know, you could have given them, some uh, like, a large amount of gold and just say they ate somebody. Oh, well. There's nothing here. Everyone's fatigued, dressed up. Sometimes I want to be like you, Nunio. I want to learn how to forget things I'd rather not think about. Some of my memories are a heavy burden to bear. In my expert opinion, you enjoy contemplating your past and the results of your actions and conducting self-analysis. If you truly wanted to forget, you would have done it already. Okay, so the only way, the only thing here is the final veil. So let's teleport back here and move on. Are any of these demon armies close? This one's getting a little close. Right, time to recruit. Nothing new. Recruit some rangers. Recruit some hedge knights. Recruit some champions. Second army is right here. Go back here and just tell all the other armies to, to make a move. Alright, you. 
Hmm. Try to join these guys down here. Okay, that is oh, wrong button. Yeah, nope. So I guess I'll get to the blade workshop and such from up here. Invade and move on. Okay, I should probably pay attention to that. Just a seven. Where the heck is it? Run up, kill them, and then I'll move on back. Easy fight. Turn it down. Love the spiders. Hedge knights go in. Chop them down. Easy to do. Save and move on. When I feel like I'm struggling with the desire to do evil, I look at the stars or the clouds. I feel I like it when clouds are in the shape of something else, like a castle, a mountain, a fat, fluffy rabbit. What the hell? Sure, whatever. Blockade of reinforcements. Army that was marching robbers to help. The army that was marching from Canabras to help Queen Galfrey was trapped, surrounded by demonic forces or soldiers had to assume an all-around defense. If they don't get help soon, soon they will all, or they all will be dead. Okay. From Canabras to help Queen Galfrey. Okay. So, where are they? So, where I can. Yes. Uh, it's easy to say they're in trouble and need help, but. 
Where the heck am I supposed to go to help them? These guys? Well, we'll find out. Maybe. No. Okay. So, those over here. No. So I have to take out this demon army in order to go here? Okay, well, for now, we will call it a day and try to figure out where to go tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow, and then we'll be able to figure out you know, the more nuance of where to, how to advance in this game. Thank you, everyone, who stopped by to check out Pathfinder. Uh, I'm going to stop, I'm going to take a break before switching to another game. And until then, take care.